How's it going, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls? This is Jeff Benjamin with 9to5Mac. On this week's episode of Back to the Mac, we talk all about external GPU boxes because Apple kept its promise and launched external GPU support in Mac OS 10.13.4. So we want to talk about that right now. Now I have been excited about the prospects of using external GPUs on the Mac for quite some time. For me, it's just really intriguing to be able to have this thin and light laptop, this MacBook Pro, this is a 2017 base model, 13 inch MacBook Pro, having this thin and light laptop, yet still having access to a lot of extra power thanks to an external GPU enclosure. And that's what's possible now on Mac OS. So I can take this thing with me on the go if I'm traveling, but I can bring it back to the office, dock it with my external GPU, and then have access to all that extra power provided by the GPU. Now this thing doesn't even have a discrete GPU. It's using an Intel integrated GPU, so it's not gonna be powerful enough for anything but the most basic of functions. Now before you jump into the deep end of the pool, you start going out to Amazon, start shopping for external graphics enclosures and for graphics cards, make sure that you have a Mac that is compatible first. That's step number one. And the following Macs are going to be compatible with external graphics on Mac OS 10.13.4. The 2016 MacBook Pro, the 2017 MacBook Pro, the 2017 4K iMac, the 2017 5K iMac, and then this guy right here, the iMac Pro. So those five Macs are compatible with external GPUs. Oh no, I've committed an infraction. The cable police are going to get me. Is it better now? Now here's an obvious question. Why would you need an external GPU to begin with? We know it offers more graphics power, so it's going to be good for things like gaming, but is there any other application where an external GPU might be beneficial? The answer to that question is, yeah, it can accelerate applications that use Metal, OpenCL, OpenGL, and there are lots of applications that use these frameworks. So it's not just all about gaming. Think about video editing or machine learning applications. Really anything that can benefit from having a powerful GPU can benefit from an eGPU setup in Mac OS. And then there's things like connecting to multiple external displays, which is sort of an obvious application, but then you have things like VR connectivity. So connecting an HTC Vive to your Mac via that external GPU is now possible in Mac OS 10.13.4. So what else should you know about an external graphics box? Well. Depending on the chassis you get, it may be able to charge your MacBook Pro at full speed, depending on its power delivery specifications. You can also use the GPU while your MacBook Pro is in clamshell mode, so you can close the lid and still benefit from the GPU. It also supports hot plugging, so it's not gonna crash when you unplug or plug it into your Mac. Even while the Mac is booted up, even while you're logged in, it just works. So you don't have to jump through a whole lot of hoops like you used to have to do, even just a few beta releases ago. Apple has also implemented a new menu bar icon when you connect an eGPU for safely ejecting or disconnecting that GPU. And here's something that maybe you didn't know. You can actually connect multiple external GPUs to your Mac using Thunderbolt 3. And if you want to view your external GPU's performance, simply open up Activity Monitor, click where it says Window, and then select GPU History. So what type of scenarios would benefit from eGPU acceleration? Well, one such scenario would be applications that can utilize multiple GPUs simultaneously. And then there's of course connecting an external display directly to the HDMI or DisplayPort connection on the GPU and running games on that external display. Games are gonna benefit heavily from the hardware acceleration provided by that GPU. And then as mentioned, connecting a VR headset like the HTC Vive directly to the GPU inside the enclosure. Now here's something that you want to consider. Each display, whether internal or external, is only driven by one single GPU. Now here's something else to consider. For the internal display on your Mac, that means the built-in display on the 5K iMac or the 4K iMac, or the built-in display on a MacBook Pro. Only the built-in GPUs, that means either the integrated or discrete GPUs on these devices is eligible to drive the display. So that's something you want to keep in mind. So what does that actually mean? 
Well, it means that an external GPU cannot drive the internal display on a MacBook Pro or on an iMac. Only the internal integrated or discrete GPUs can drive the display on these devices. Now, Apple's support documentation, it seems like it contradicts what I just said because there's a bullet point here. It says, in general, an eGPU can accelerate performance in these types of applications. And on the last bullet point, it notes, pro applications and 3D games that accelerate the built-in display of an iMac or MacBook Pro. This capability must be enabled by the application's developer. Now, at first glance, it seems like, oh, wow, well, an external GPU can drive the internal display of an iMac or MacBook Pro, but that's actually not the case. If your application renders with an external GPU and you want to present it on the internal display of your MacBook Pro, you will first have to copy over that information from the external GPU to the GPU driving your MacBook Pro's display. So that obviously is going to affect performance because you actually have to copy the draw data from one GPU to another GPU. And they can't talk directly, they actually have to use system resources to perform that copy. Now that same principle, for example, would still apply to the internal GPUs on say a 15 inch MacBook Pro with both a discrete GPU and an integrated GPU. Say that display was being driven by the integrated GPU, but your application was being driven by the discrete GPU. Well, you would still have to copy that draw data from the discrete GPU over to the integrated GPU because the integrated GPU is actually driving the display. However, in that case, you're using PCIe bandwidth. With an external GPU, you're using Thunderbolt 3 bandwidth. And Thunderbolt 3 has much less bandwidth available than PCIe. So the moral of the story is actually a pretty simple one. If you want the best performance from your external GPU, you need to connect to an external display. That way there's no copies needed. What's being accelerated is what's being displayed on that external monitor. So now that you know the basic ins and outs of eGPU support on the Mac, let's talk about some of the hardware that Apple recommends. Now it's actually pretty simple, cut and dry, because Apple only officially supports AMD GPUs in Mac OS. So here are the officially supported GPUs in Mac OS 10.13.4. The AMD RX 570, the 580, the Radeon Pro WX7100, the AMD Radeon RX Vega 56 and RX Vega 64, the Vega Frontier Edition Air, and the Radeon Pro WX9100. Now, before deciding on the eGPU chassis, you want to check and make sure that it provides enough power to your card to support that card, because some cards have higher power requirements, like the RX Vega 64 obviously has a higher power requirement than the RX 580, for instance. And Apple II has made this easy because they've listed uh, the GPUs and the enclosures that work with those GPUs. So Apple is recommending the OWC Mercury Helios FX, the Power Color Devil Box, the Sapphire Gearbox, and three external graphics boxes from Sonnet, the eGraphics Breakaway Box 350W, the 550W, and the 650W. Sonnet also produces an all-in-one setup with the RX 570 built in. It's called the Radeon RX 570 eGraphics Breakaway Puck. So keep that in mind as well. Now, if you're using an eGPU with a MacBook Pro, you definitely want to keep in mind the power delivery specifications. Obviously, something like Sonnet's eGraphics Breakaway Box 650W is highly desirable because it provides 85 watts of power delivery along with providing plenty of power to the cards. So it's gonna work with every eligible Mac and every eligible GPU with no problems. If you're using a 15 inch MacBook Pro, you want an external graphics box that can provide 85 watts of power delivery so that you get full speed charging when connected to your MacBook Pro. If you're using a 13 inch MacBook Pro, you wanna make sure that you're using the Thunderbolt 3 ports on the left side of the machine. You also want to avoid daisy chaining an eGPU. You want it directly connected to the Thunderbolt 3 ports on your Mac. So I hope this video was able to clear up a little bit about external GPUs because obviously Mac OS 10.13.4 was just released. Uh, a lot of information is coming out right now from Apple as far as what developers need to do to update their apps, 
um, best practices involved with the GPUs or external GPU support, things of that nature. So I think as the days and weeks uh, move ahead, that we'll learn a lot more about external graphics boxes. So folks, I hope this video was able to help you out. There are a couple of takeaways that I just want to emphasize. Number one, Apple has some really good documentation on their website, so I definitely will link that down below. You can check that out for more details, documentation for developers and end users. Uh, number two is that Apple definitely recommends certain graphics card and graphics box combinations. So you wanna check out their recommendations, see what's natively supported within Mac OS. The next point is that you should probably opt to use an external display. True, developers will have the option of supporting external graphics acceleration in their apps when displayed on the internal display, but again, that's gonna come at a cost. And one last very, very important detail that I almost forgot is that Bootcamp does not officially support external graphics boxes on the Mac. So that's something you definitely want to keep in mind. Now that said, there will probably be steps we can take to work around that restriction, but officially Apple is saying no, there is no bootcamp support for external graphics boxes. So ladies and gentlemen, this was just the tip of the iceberg as far as external graphics boxes are concerned. If you want to learn more, again, make sure you check out the links down below in the description. And also if you appreciated this video, I know it's a little different than some of our other back to the Mac videos, but please leave me a thumbs up and let me know. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.